the compound effect by darren hardy chapter 3 habits subtopic who you have to become when most people set out to achieve new goals they ask okay i have my goal now what to do i need to do okay i have my goal now what do i need to do to get it it's not a bad question but it's not the first question that needs to be addressed either the question, question we should be asking ourselves is, who do I need to become? You probably know some people who seem to do all the right things, but still don't produce the results they want, right? Why not? One thing Jim Rohn taught us, taught me is, if you want to have more, you have to become more. Success is not something you pursue. What you pursue will elude you. It can be like trying to chase butterflies. Success is something that you attract by the person you become. When I understood that philosophy, wow, it revolutionized, it revolutionized my life and personal growth. When I made single and ready to find my mate, sorry, when I was single and ready to find my mate and get married, I made a long list of traits I desired in a perfect woman for me. I filled more than 40 pages of a journal front and back, describing her in great detail, her personality, character, key attributes, attitudes, philosophies about life, even what kind of family she'd come from, including her culture, physical makeup, down to texture of the hair. I wrote in depth, 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 what our life would be like and what we do together. If I had then asked, what do I have to do to find and get this girl? I might still be on that butterfly chase. Instead, I look back at the list and considered whether or not I embodied those attributes myself. Did I have the very qualities I was expecting in her? I asked myself, what kind of a man would a woman like to be looking for? What do I need to become to be attractive to a woman of this substance? I filled 40 more pages describing all the attributes, qualities, behavior, attitudes, and characteristics I needed to become myself. Then I went to work on becoming and achieving those qualities. Guess what? It worked. As if she were peeling off the pages of my journal and appeared in front of me, my wife, Georgia, is exactly what I described and asked for in almost eerie detail. The key was my getting clear on who I'd have to be to attract and keep a woman of her quality and then doing the work to achieve that. Behave yourself. All right, let's ma map out your process to achieving the goals you've decided upon. This is the doing process or in some cases, the stop doing process. What stands between you and your goal is your behavior. Do you need to stop doing anything so the compound effect isn't taking you into a downward spiral? Similarly, what do you need to start doing to change your trajectory so that it's headed in the most beneficial direction? In other words, what habits and behaviors do you need to subtract from and add to your life? Your life comes down to this formula. You equals your choices plus behavior plus habit plus compounded equal to your goals. That's why it's imperative to figure out which behaviors are blocking the path that leads to your goal and which behaviors will help you accomplish your goal. You may think you've handled you got a handle on all your habit, bad habits, but I bet good money, you're wrong. Again, that's why tracking is so effective. I mean, honestly, do you know how many hours of TV you really watch every day? How many hours do you spend uh, tuned to new channels or keeping up with the goals and accomplishments of others on the sports or style networks? Do you know how many cans of soda you drink or how many hours you spend doing non-essential work on the computer? Example, Facebook, reading online gossip, etc. As I emphasized in the previous chapter, your first job is to become aware of how you're behaving. Where have you fallen asleep on the job and developed an unconscious habit that's leading you astray? 
Not long ago, a successful executive with whom I serve uh, on a nonprofit board hired me to mentor him on improving his productivity. He was doing well, but he knew he could optimize his time and output further with some coaching. I had him track his activities for a week and I noticed something I see too often. He spent an incredible amount of time reviewing the news, 45 minutes in the morning reading the newspaper, another 30 minutes listening to the news on his morning commute, and an equal amount of time tuning in again on his drive back home. During his workday, he'd check Yahoo News several times, spending at least 20 minutes in total. When he got home, he'd catch the last 15 minutes of the local news while greeting his family. Then he'd catch up on 30 minutes of sports news and 30 minutes of 10 o'clock news before going to bed. In total, he was spending 3.5 hours of news each day. This man wasn't an economist or a commodities trader or in any profession that lived or died by the latest news. The time he spent with the paper and news program on radio and TV greatly exceeded what he needed to be knowledgeable voter and contributing member of the society, or even to enhance his own personal interests. In fact, he was getting very little valuable information through his programming choices or rather his lack of choices. So why did he spend nearly four hours a day consuming it? It was a habit. I suggested he keep, keep his TV and radio off cancel his newspaper subscription and set up an RSS feed so he could select and review only the news he deemed important for his business and personal interests. Doing so immediately cleared out 95% of the mind cluttering and time sucking noise. He could now review all that mattered to him in less than 20 minutes a day. This left the 45 minutes in the morning and the hour in the evening for productive activities like exercise, listening to instructional and inspirational material, reading, planning, preparing, and spending quality time with his family. He tells me, he has never felt less stress. Constant negative news has a tendency to make you anxious and more inspired and focused than he does now. One small, simple change in habit, one giant for leap forward in balance and productivity. Okay, now it's your turn. Get your little notebook and write on Write out your top three goals. Now make a list of the bad habits that might be sabotaging your progress in each area. Write down every one. Habits and behaviors never die. If there is a discrepancy between what you said and what you do, I'm going to believe what you do every time. If you tell me you wanna be healthy, but you've got Doritos dust on your fingers, I'm believing that's Doritos. If you say self-improvement is a priority, but you spend more time with your Xbox than at the library, I'm believing the Xbox. If you say you're a dedicated professional, but you show up late and unprepared, your behavior rats you out every time. You say your family is your top priority, but if they don't appear on your busy calendar, they are not really. Look at the list of bad habits you just made. That's the truth about who you are. Now you get to decide whether that's okay or if you want to change. Next, add to that list all the habits you need to adopt that practice and compounded over time will result in you gloriously achieving your goals. Making this list isn't about wasting energy by getting judgmental and regretful. It's about taking a clear-headed look at what you want to improve. 
I'm not going to leave you there, however. Let's uproot those sabotaging bad habits and plant new positive and healthy ones in their place. Thank you for listening the compound effect. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.